Creating people flow. How do we do that? And once we create the people flow, how do we deal with it? Okay, let's talk a little bit about design. Churches of the past is, have been designed in a sequential type of way. We have a need for worship, so we create worship space, oftentimes liturgical style space. Liturgical meaning twice as long as it is wide. Ceremonial, really good for ceremonial events. Weddings, funerals work really well in spaces like that. Not so good for worship because the distance sometimes exceeds what, what people can connect to on, on the stage. There's not a real strong integration of things that are going on on the stage and the people. It's more I'm there to watch worship happening, not participate in worship as opposed to communal style worship, which is a little bit different. But in those older style buildings, they were often desi times designed that way. And then we need some spaces for child care because we got a little tired of the kids crying in the middle of the service, or we need uh, education wing over here, or we need a family life center over here. And pretty soon these churches are these maze-like buildings that you go into. I mean, there's thousands and thousands of these around the nation. They, they are the majority of the churches that we worship in. And you go into these buildings and you walk in and they say, well, you hang your coat up over there and you better take this map or Joe here is going to accompany you because if you go back to drop your kids off, you're never going to find your way back. You've got to go through B, C, and D to get from A to E. Right? You've got to go past everything. It didn't matter. It didn't matter because people were not making decisions about where to go to church based on these superficial things like is the building organized well? Are my kids being kept secure? Nobody was thinking about security 30 years ago. It didn't matter. Nobody was doing weird stuff. And if they were, it wasn't in the news. Right? Maybe they were doing weird stuff. But, but it wasn't splashed all over the news. And it wasn't affecting the culture the way that it does nowadays. So moms and dads today want to know, are my kids being attended to? Are they safe when I drop them off? Is there good proximity? Are my kids' spaces nearby? If I need to get to my child because somebody's buzzed my app on my phone and said, hey, your child needs to be fed. Can I get there or do I have to go through the maze experience in order to go find where my kid's at? It's important for us to think about things differently than sequentially. People didn't make decisions about that back in those days. They made decisions about where to go to church based on what? It's where I was raised, right? It was my denomination. I, I transferred towns, I'm going to go to that denomination. I wasn't there evaluating the building saying, boy, they hit all the check boxes here. Not, not important. Nowadays, we think about buildings the way that a community center, a modern community center, and I'll make the contrast between the old YMCAs from the 1950s and 60s. YMCAs were sequential. You'd walk in, they were not celebratory at all. You'd walk in, tiny little lobbies, guy taking tickets, pay your two bucks, go down the hall, see a little sign sticking out from the side of the door, men's locker room, you go in the men's locker room, weave your way around, and eventually you find the pool or the gym or whatever it was. Modern community centers are very different. Modern community centers, clear entryway. I pull into the parking lot, no mistaking where I go. A lot of times we pull into a church parking lot and we're going around the church, finding a parking spot, and then we end up in a side door asking people, where am I? What's going on? Right? Ten different doors to the building. Or they lock all the doors, and the only one that's open, and they try this door, try this door, and eventually find their way to the door that they need to go into. A community center doesn't disguise the front door. It's very clear. Lots of glass. Our churches from the past, hardly any glass. Designed iconically, punched openings, load-bearing masonry walls, permanence, solidity, foundation, right? Our church has communicated, we are here to stay. We're never moving. We're never changing. And they don't. They don't ever change because you can't change those buildings. They're difficult to change. Modern community centers, lots of glass, life, we see things. Color. Color. I had a, I had a pastor in uh, Centerville, Virginia tell me, I've got 50,000 cars on their way into Fairfax every morning going this way and 50,000 cars going home every night. I want this building to be relevant to the people coming in. I also want it to be changeable. I want people to be able to see inside the building and see life inside the building. I want people to be able to tell that we're not a dead church as opposed to churches that have little openings with shutters on them or massively ceremonial front doors that is a real barrier to cross, right? Really tough. Interconnected, inviting. This plan is largely reflective of the plan that we're in today. This is, this is the project I showed you over in Believer's Church in Chesapeake. Very similar type of things. All the spaces are different in terms of size, shape, 
a little bit in the orientation, but nevertheless, very clear front entry. When you come into that space, everything that the church has to offer in terms of ministry is visually available to me. That's where I go find administration needs to be met. That's where I go find restrooms. That's where I go worship. That's where I go drop my kids off. The secure place that I go drop my kids off. Everything is available to us visually. And it's a large enough space where they can be incorporated either before or after. So when they come out, they don't feel the urgent need to bolt for the parking lot because it's so uncomfortable for them to be in. So this is, this is space that if the community is intentional about meeting them, there is space provided for that to happen. I'm, I'm, I became a believer. I moved from Chicago to Salt Lake City in 1975. In 1977, I followed a girl into church, a girl I was hopelessly in love with for about three months. I went to church with her, and when I got to church, I was a little uncomfortable. It was not a, my normal setting. I wasn't raised in that church. I didn't know anything about what they believed. I just knew that I really loved this girl. And when I got to church, Eunice Bellamy in her 70s and Dorothy Ernst in her 70s, widowers, invited me and my roommates over for pork chops. They were intentional, hurtling past the fact that we had a narthex about a fourth the size of this room they had hurtled past because they were an intentional church about meeting college students and they knew the success rate for a college student, the kill rate, was amplified greatly by feeding them real food. We were eating ragu and hot dogs all week and they were feeding us pork chops and mashed potatoes and corn and suddenly I formed an attachment to Eunice and Dorothy and the people that were leading men's studies in the church after I fell out of love with my girlfriend at the time. That space affords us those opportunities to create those kinds of relational things that are important for people to stick. We talk about the stickiness of church. That kind of space is a facilitator to stickiness. It's environmental space where people can come in and begin to be incorporated into the space if the people are ready to receive them. If they're not ready to receive them or they don't want to receive them, if there's hindrances to that, don't build the space. You're wasting your money. Right? It's support of a mindset. This space up in, up near, um, up in Winter Garden, this is a, a church that we finished last year, two years ago. This space is radically different than what they used to have. They used to have a little tiny narthex and people would get into that narthex and being literally shoved out the door by people coming in behind them from the worship center. So they were off to the parking lot or outside where... In Florida, it's so uncomfortably hot sometimes in the late morning on a Sunday morning that they, they gravitated towards the car. This space allows them to, to begin to foster those kinds of relationships, both for people internally, discipling relationships, as well as the kinds of new creation of relationships for people that, again, venture into this building from, from the community.